Hello, my name is Danny Ramirez and I will be your tour guide today. We're standing in front of Chalmers Hall, the home of the KU Department of Visual Art. This is the first floor where the printmaking department is located. Here you'll be able to take multiple classes in multiple disciplines like edging, uh, screen printing or serigraphy, uh, wood block carving, intaglio, and amongst many others. This is a serigraphy room where if you decide to take classes in the printmaking department, you will be assigned a light table so you can trace your drawings and also you'll be assigned a printing table. We have plenty of storage for you to use so you can use all of your works on paper and store them here. Plus your screen can be stored over here As a student of the Department of Visual Art or, or a printmaking student, you'll be able to take multiple classes and multiple disciplines. And as you can see, we have these rooms full of presses and equipment that can take your work to the next level. As a student of the Department of Visual Art, you will have access 24 seven to the facilities and the facilities often have a lot of vintage equipment, uh, industrial grade, so your work can become much larger than you have ever experimented with. Here's another room in the printmaking department. Even when things are busy, as you can see, there is plenty of equipment and room for you to get your work done at any time without any inconvenience. Now we're on the second floor in the ceramics department. As you can see on the background, there are some st students refining their wheel throwing skills. We also have tables so you can build sculptures out of ceramics. And you can see our socially distanced uh, shields. And you also get storage for everything you're doing. As a ceramicist student, you will be able to have access to all of this industrial grade equipment, large kilns. You also be able to mix your own glazes and you'll have access to this facility 24 seven also. So we still are in the second floor because the ceramics and uh, sculpture, they're uh, next to each other. And what you see right now is the wood shop for the sculpture department. Uh, you will have access to this 24 seven too. And there are often lab assistants here. As you can see, you'll be able to experiment with multiple equipment as long as you do it safely. And you will always be trained before you're allowed to use any of this equipment. We have, everything is industrial grade. We have a planer and we have a band sauce, a lathe, table sauce, and there is more equipment than you can ask for and check out when you need it for your projects. So this is a second wood shop located in the second floor also. The difference between this one and the one in the sculpture department is here you have a store where you can buy all kinds of wood and hardware for your sculptural projects. Uh, you can build your stretchers, you can uh, build your wooden panels to paint on. But the difference is this wood shop, it's only open during business hours and they always have lab assistants. So anytime you come in and you have a question about a project or you need help, they will be able to help you. And also you can order custom made stretchers and wooden panels without having to make yourself if you're in a hurry and they will make them for you and you can pick them up a couple days after you have ordered them and their prices are very reasonable. And as you can see over here, this uh, wood shop is full of industrial grade equipment too. So you'll, uh, you'll never be waiting to do any woodwork if you're really driven to do so. 
here, as you can see, we have uh, two industrial grade table saws. And then we have all of these band saws that are lined up next to each other. We also have planers, uh, sanders, and miter saws. So anything you can think of. So right now I'm standing here at the technology lab. It's next to the common shop that you just saw. And what's very interesting about here, you ha have availability to uh, laser engravers and they can also cut. We have 3D printers and you can make an appointment when, uh, with one of the lab techs and they will always be willing to help you in your uh, specific project needs. We're now on the third floor and what you're seeing right now is an installation of multiple students from the expanded media department on a video class. And to my right, you see display cases and students have the availability to uh, schedule when they want to show their work in the display cases. So this is the gallery located in the third floor. And this is where, as a senior, you will have your senior show. And also, uh, grad students get to have their thesis exhibition here. What you're seeing right now is the foundations room. As a KU visual arts student, you take foundation classes for two years, and it gives you a really good reference on different artistic methods and practices. This is one of our drawing rooms. We have about three of them. And as you see, we usually set up still lifes for the students to draw. You have availability to have drawing benches and large uh, drawing easels. And what's interesting too, if you decide to, you can take a live drawing class while you, while you will have access to a live model so you can draw. These are the undergrad art studios. As a senior, you would have access to a studio for a year so you can practice being a professional artist while you still are at school. This is the fourth floor where some of the graduate studios are. It's also known as the horseshoe. So if you're an MFA candidate, this is where you will have your studio and your private space. Although it's important to remember that we have multiple grad studios all over the building, depending on your discipline. This is the fourth floor where the painting studios are. As you can see, we usually set up still lives and you'll have access to a lot of room. This is the first part of three parts of the painting studios because we like our painters to have a lot of space for large works. Uh, you'll see a still life behind me. You'll have access to this space 24 seven easels and you also get a storage space especially given to you so you can store all, all of your work. What you're seeing right now is the expanded media room. If your art practice is based on technology, this is the place you want to be. Uh, these are all uh, Mac Pros and you will have access to, and they're loaded with every program almost that you can think of. Uh, just to give you a few examples, we have all of the programs from Adobe Creative Cloud. We also have 3D mapping programs and music editing programs. Uh, back there, that blue wall acts as a green screen. So if uh, video, it's your calling, there are so many possibilities and you can do there. Back here, we have this huge printer for you to do mixed media work. And it's nice to have this because at a high school level or at home, you will never have anything even close to be this large. And what is really interesting about this room too, a lot of students decide to work with sound. This is a sound booth that you see over here for you to experiment with your work, a MIDI keyboard and speakers and audio interfaces so you can experiment with a lot of digitally driven uh, processes. This is a lab room for expanded media. As, a, as you can see, there are more computers in this room than the previous room we saw. And you will have access 24 seven to this room with the computers and all of the creative apps that they come with. So you can work at any time at your own pace. The expanded media department includes installation, performance, video art, 
sound and digital imaging. This is one of two rooms and the expanded media department has availability to. And what is interesting about these rooms, they allowed students to explore their ideas at a larger scale. Right now we are on the fifth floor and what you're seeing right now are weaving looms and we have availability of four harnesses, eight harnesses and up to 12 harnesses. So students get to experiment a lot with color uh, techniques and different weaving patterns. And if you look at this machine back here, this is an automated loom and it's connected to a computer program. So you actually design the pattern and then the automation of the computer uh, weaves it for you. This is a room we'll, where we keep all the yarn. And as a textile student, you have the choice of joining the textiles club. And for about $40 a semester, you're able to use unlimited amounts of all of the colors we have here. And sometimes that is nice because yarn can get expensive, so you can experiment before you buy with your own money. This is another part of the textile department is the sewing room. As you can see, we have many sewing machines and we have some larger ones. And what's good about having availability to all of these machines is you can be here uh, anytime, 24 seven, you have access to this. So you can work at your own time and your own pace. This is the lab room for the textiles department. Although you may not know, then uh, textiles has a big connection to computing and mathematics. If you decide to uh, do weavings, this is where you will be uh, designing the patterns based on mathematical formulas and computation. This is a printing room for the textile department. As you can see, you'll be able to have uh, access to large tables and industrial sinks. And also, all of the chemicals that you would need to make your dye are provided here at a small fee. This is another room on the textile floor. And as you can see, there are large printing tables and you have access to all of this 24 seven. So even if people are here, you will always be able to find a personal space so you can create your work. Welcome to metalsmithing and jewelry area and the program. My name is Gina Westergaard. Um, I am Sun Young Chung. And we both teach in the area. We also have another colleague, John Hamner. And we're right now we're standing in the beginning room and we usually offer four beginning classes a semester and um, there's enough space for up to 16 students but we tend to average about 12 students per class. In the beginning classes the students will learn um, important foundation techniques on how to uh, work with metal, how to, how to cut, how to manipulate, form uh, metal, how to finish it, and then we then from there we work into fabrication and soldering techniques and some simple stone setting techniques and on how to build the first 3d dimensional objects one of the questions that parents ask us on these tours is what can a student do with a with a degree a bfa in metalsmithing and jewelry and uh, there's there's several uh, good careers they can pursue uh, one would be that, that they can um, start their own jewelry design company and sell at art fairs and galleries. And they can also become the cat designer or jewelry appraiser. Um, they can work for the corporate companies or fashion companies. They can also pursue uh, graduate studies after they get a BFA and go on to teach. And they can also work for galleries and museums. And there are a lot of job option opportunity with the jewelry BFA. Mm -hmm. Some of our students go on to study gemology at the GI Institute, and there's one in New York and LA, and they may become uh, appraisers. So this is our majors room. We have 
approximately 20 majors in the program and our classes for majors tend to run about six to eight students. So there's a lot of one-on-one -on -one time that the faculty um, spend with each student. We are the oldest BFA program in, in the country and we're quite proud of that. We have um, a lot of international students. We also have the exchange programs with the Finland and Korea. So every year, our students go to um, Finland and Korea to have a different experience and learning. Um, and also, the Korean students and the Finnish students come to KU to learn um, the different techniques. After um, students finish their intro class, uh, next class will be the casting class. Students will learn the wax carvings and the rose wax castings, and they also learn the mold making and wax injections. So most of the production process, um, they will learn during the casting class. This is the hallowware room. So in this room, students are learning how to uh, take sheets of metal and through various uh, techniques they're, they're forming into uh, vessels. And you can, we also focus on um, these techniques in jewelry scale as well. We use a lot of hammers and these are, these are called forming stakes. And we are also working on anvils here. So this usually is a quite noisy atmosphere and with a lot of activity going on. This is the enameling room and this is one of the areas that I teach in. And here we're, we're studying um, glass, uh, fusing glass on metal. And we're working with kilns. Uh, they're, they're approximately 1,500 degrees. So in this room we have about four kilns for enameling and we also have a precious metal clay kiln behind this board here. And um, here's an example. Uh, a piece. This is a scraffito um, technique, but we're, we, I teach uh, very uh, traditional techniques from cloisonne to um, bastai and chapelle, and then we go downstairs and, and use the, the lab and do some laser cutting on enameling, and we're also doing some graphite drawing. Um, so I really try to focus a broad range from um, traditional to contemporary and experimental. In these rooms, we have two main tools. Um, GRS tools and Orion the Perks Art Weather. GRS company manufactures the, one of the best engravings and stone setting tools in the world. And every year, um, they create the one week workshops just for the KU metal students. So we take the students to Emporia, Kansas, where a GRS is located, and students learn the engravings to stone settings. And after they come back, they can continue to, to practice stone setting and engraving with the same settings as they use in the workshops. There is a summer award for the workshops and internships um, the, any residency the student can go and I was the one who actually received this award when I was in undergrad programs. Um, I got the money and went to the matrix workshop um, which is the workshop that teaches the 3D CAD programs and after the workshops uh, I build up my portfolios and then apply the grad schools and now I'm teaching the technology in this program. There's uh, other awards that we offer. We offer the Bill Seeley Reactive Metal Award for uh, research and new technology and both at the uh, undergrad and the graduate level. We have an, an Alpha Rho Gamma um, area uh, award and that's our student club and there's funding through that and we also offer a McKenna award which is quite unusual I think it's offered for students um, who are graduating with a BFA degree in our area and want to start out and uh, start out on their own and have um, create their own business 
So um, that's a really fantastic opportunity, and that's offered once a year. So we do have a dedicated 3D technology lab in Meadows area. Um, there is the computer labs with the CAD programs, and there is also the, the 3D fabrication labs. So there is a CNC mill with the wax models, and there is a couple of 3D printers uh, for jewelry making and model making. We are planning to renovate the whole Meadows area in the future, and this the 3D technology lab will be very close to the grad studio, so they have easy access to the 3D technology. This is an example of one of our grad um, students' space, so they're close proximity to, to everything they need within the program, and we have enough space for um, four to five students in this area. We tend to have about three to four grad students in the, in the program. Sometimes we have an international visitor come for a year and study. And we're also in the process, this is pretty exciting, we're, we're um, starting a renovation and this is one of the focuses of the renovation so we, we hope to at least double our grad student space um, very soon.